Welcome everyone, this is the clash of generations as 13 year old Pragnananda takes on Hikaru Nakamura. This is the first ever time that Prag is playing over the board against Hikaru. Knight comes out to d f3, d5, g3. We have the Reti opening, but Prag converts it into the English by putting his pawn on c4 and challenging Nakamura's center. You can see Hikaru taking a bit of a thought there. He may want to push the pawn or he could take that. He pushes the pawn. Ambitious play there by Hikaru. Now he has more space in the position. Prag goes b4. Whoa, what a move that was. His main idea is to stop c5 so that the pawn can be solidly supported in the center. Bishop comes out and Hikaru now has a chance to push the pawn and open his bishop to the rook. He does it. He does it. What an interesting move. Prag gets off his suit there. He's like, I know what to do here. Takes on e2. Queen takes. This is fine position for white here because look at the development that white has. And now Prag can push the pawn forward. He has 4 minutes 50 seconds. So does Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru has played very risky chess here for sure. And he is going to be punished for it perhaps if Prag can push his pawn forward that would be the best move Prag taking his time because he knows that Hikaru is a very dangerous opponent he pushes knight comes to b4 threatening knight c2 check but the best move now is to push d4 Prag plays the second best move he castles it out and he tells Hikaru what is your knight doing here because after a3 it can very well get trapped Hikaru has to be very careful he goes bishop f5 now. The plan is to put the bishop here. Look at this variation. If Prague finds it, d4, bishop comes here, queen b2. Once you take, I take back with the bishop and the knight is trapped. Next move, a3. Can Prague find this d4 move? Not at all easy. But yes, knight e5 is also another possible move to stop the pieces from coming to d3. Prague is taking his time. He has 4 minutes, 5 seconds. And he must take his time because clearly d4 is very strong. There's also another move, knight e1, which controls both these squares that the black pieces are attacking at. And maybe that is also a good way to go. You can see that Prag is ready with his move. But he's just making sure that everything is fine. d4 is what could just end the game here. 3 minutes 30 seconds for Prag, 4 minutes 43 for Hikaru. You can see him laying back in his chair. Prag goes 95. Not the best move it was by Prag, but still he's doing quite okay. Now Hikaru can actually play his knight to d3. Because if Prag takes it, the bishop comes in and skewers the queen and the rook. So what is Prag's idea there? What has he thought about it? Look at this, knight to d3, if you take here, bishop d3 and you are in some trouble there. You can see Hikaru calculating, trying to understand what is Prag's idea, why has he played it this way. And Hikaru goes in, he puts his knight and now Prag could come back with his knight there in order to save himself. But that's not why he would have played his knight to e5. Clearly, he has something up his sleeve. What is it? What is it that Prague wants to play? Oh, look at this idea. The bishop is defending the knight, isn't it? Can I push it away with g4? But that would not be good because knight can come to f4. And in fact, a very strong move is also to pick up the bishop. So actually, g4 would be not at all a good move. The best move here. Oh, he plays it. He plays g4. <laughs> what a move by Prague. And now... Look, Hikaru, if he takes on e5 here, then this is a better position for white because b7 is hanging and of course white, black king still in the center. So g4 is very strong, but look at the best move. You take here and after he takes here, black has a very powerful solution and that is to bring his queen in. And why is this so strong? Because your queen is going to switch on to f4 and then attack this. Hikaru finds it. He takes here. Prag takes on f5 and he finds this next move as well. Hikaru is a monster in the position. Now this is all over for Prag. 
from a clearly better position, he has landed into a close to lost position. If the queen comes here and attacks h2, what is Prague going to do? Prague now trying to figure out how to extricate himself from the mess th that he has created. One idea is to take on b7 and attack the rook. But then queen f4, how do you stop here? f3 and rook comes here. No, what did he play? He played bishop to a3. He put his bishop here, but what is his idea to queen f4? Threatening mate in one. There's no way to stop losing the h2 pawn, isn't it? You can see Hikaru is visibly surprised. He plays his queen to f4. Prague says, take my pawn. Hikaru chops it and now takes the bishop. Whoa, what just happened there? Check. Knight takes, king takes and now the smoke has cleared. Let's take stock. Hikaru has seven pawns. Prague has six pawns. But clearly the position is terrible for Pragnananda. He takes here, pawn takes. And now the h pawn is a passer here. The knight can come out. You, you can even win another pawn by taking this. You know, take this and what is white's counterplay? Where is it? Maybe with c5, c6, that could be an idea. So Hikaru has to make a choice between taking another pawn, being greedy or finishing his development by bringing his knight. Both are good moves. He has 2 minutes 53 seconds against Prux 2 minutes 39. Everything is flowing in Hikaru's favor and very likely that he's going to beat Pragnananda in their first ever encounter. He's playing with the pawn there. What should be his next move? Pragnananda, meanwhile, still concentrated, but he knows deep within that his position is close to lost. I like how Hikaru, after the entire transformation that has happened, is taking his time. He knows deep within that he's totally winning and the only thing that can lead to a disaster here is impatience so knight comes out good move developing and if you get a chance you may want to castle and connect your rooks how does prag continue what is his way of gaining even a bit of counterplay because if you take here then i can take back and the rook will come in he goes rook to d3 and maybe his plan is to double here. But anyway, there are no entry points. And this time, Hikaru can seriously take this pawn. It's a free, nice, juicy pawn. If you go to rook e3 to attack this pawn with your bishop and rook, I can simply push it forward and everything is safe. So maybe taking this pawn is the best idea. But Hikaru is a bit unsure. He's trying to be very precise. And he castles. Whoa. His plan is if you take here, he wants to pin this and if you try to break the pin, then the knight jumps in and if you try to attack the knight, then takes here and this is what he wants to do. So clearly the e7 pawn is cannot be taken. It's a poison pawn. But Prague now is back in the game in some way. The last move dropped a lot of advantage because Hikaru clearly could have taken the pawn. Prague knows that this is his chance perhaps to find something. But what does he do? He definitely doesn't want to take here. It improves black structure. And so he goes king f3. Rook f8. He saves the pawn, which is actually a good idea. Now the bishop can no longer take the pawn, but Prak can put more pressure by bringing his other rook. Suddenly you can see that white pieces at least coordinate with each other, which is good news for Pragnananda. He brings his rook. And attacks the pawn. He drops the bishop. Looks at Hikaru. E6 played. The good news for Prague is that on time. He's doing quite well. He has as much time as Hikaru has. F takes E6. Taken. He takes back. Black is still a solid pawn up. So he's better. But no longer completely winning. And now the bishop comes here. Maybe what he wants to do is put his bishop either on F4 or G5. That is his plan. Pawn push to e5. King goes back. And Hikaru wants to move his rook. What is it that he wants to play? Does he want to move his rook up the board? Which is actually a good idea. Rook e6. He plays it. He plays his rook to e6. And maybe if at some point you can get this a6 break. That would be epic. Because then the rook gets activated. Prag goes bishop here. And he's attacking the knight. 
the other rook jumps into e8 and if you go in later after exchanging the knight this rooks can stop you from causing any damage rook e3 played by prague knight comes to d7 hikaru wants to play his knight to c5 or b6 attacking these weak queenside pawns that is his idea prague now down to 1 minute 14 seconds where is his counterplay while hikaru is slowly and steadily improving his position he can go king g7 h6 push the bishop back these are all the ideas that he has prag definitely under pressure and has to come up with something but he is good at it he is he doesn't give up he keeps fighting on and on and that's what he has to do in this position don't give up don't get under too much time pressure because against hikaru if you have little time that is a recipe for disaster he's too quick he goes rook d1 he attacks the knight on d7 hikaru can now place his knight on c5 but a good move rook d6 when ahead in material exchange 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 rook d3 he plays his rook again here bishop comes back and now b6 played this is clearly advantage for hikaru can move his knight excellent move forcing prag to trade something you can see prag they're stopping in his tracks goes back goes back one idea that prag could have is to push his queen side pawns knight jumps in now he's really forcing prag to take because if you the c3 pawn is also hanging so prag takes here i think taking with the rook and exchanging even more pieces makes complete sense he takes it he takes it now prag really doesn't want to take because if he takes pawn takes or even knight takes would be very very strong and then it's completely lost so rook b1 played and now can you take this pawn well hikaru says i'm going to take it with my rook once again he's back in control prag goes rook b4 interesting chess he wants to go rook a4 and attack here very resourceful the youngster is very resourceful he's not giving up and as we know hikaru in this game does not want to give any counterplay to prag and he's being very careful about it what should he do he can take here yes he takes rook goes to a4 and now he goes to d6 attacking here takes rook takes c4 defending his pawn and prag is actually creating some play on the queen side the knight jumps to f5 hitting the bishop that's a good move that's a good move because if you push your pawn knight will take the bishop there so he goes bishop d2 saves his bishop fighting on prag is fighting and you can see hikaru is not very happy with prag's resistance he is he has to find a way to now continue one plan is to go knight d4 and maybe place your knight perhaps on b3 to stop all counterplay no e4 is a massive blunder because he's given up the f4 square and now this is a tag will prag spot it yes he does and hikaru shaking his head suddenly the position has become terrible for hikaru the pawns are very weak with hikaru he does not sort of hide his uh, expressions he's so unhappy now prag can take with this bishop attack this pawn suddenly he has two powerful passers oh my god now a5 prag don't worry about e3 stuff because your pawn will queen here no prag worries and you know he had a winning chance to push his pawn king f1 hikaru pushes his pawn forward pawn takes you can see prag getting really excited there hikaru also playing very quickly but now the position is equal prag is back in the game he brings his king in, rook attacks the bishop, bishop drops back. It's not so easy to play against Prague in such positions. He's good at it. He's not going to fall for any knight forks. Rook comes to d7, attacking the knight. Knight jumps to f4. Yes, he plays it. And now, pawn, both pawns are attacked here. b6 and g6, Hikaru chops off a pawn. Prague also takes one more pawn. Whoa, what a... Come back by Pragnananda, king e8. And now the knight is defending this pawn. So Prag attacks the knight as well. Hikaru is shaking his head. The position no longer better for him. But he's trying everything to ensure that his, you know, he has some chances. He's playing for tricks. 
but Prague is going to be fine. Now the bishop is attacked. Can you simply go up, defend the bishop and also attack the knight? He goes to g7 and Prague says I'm attacking this pawn. My rook is attacking this pawn. Takes pawn push. Rook moves back. Ooh, the b pawn is going ahead. King f7. Check. King up. Rook moves back and Prague is now completely fine. The b pawn is very strong. And next move, he can simply chop off this pawn. Hikaru goes back behind the b-pawn. Prag takes it. Takes on b7. He brings his bishop back and offers a draw. Hikaru does not even respond. He just makes his move. He's so unhappy with his position. But Prag is very calm. You know, he's simply moving his bishop, uh, rook back and throw there. Attacks the knight. Rook defends the knight. This is, of course, a dead draw. But Hikaru just wants to play on because, you know, it's out of inertia that he's playing his next moves. He doesn't want to continue. He plays rook c6. King comes up, knight c7. And now Prague finally exchanges the rooks. And this is all over. What a defense by the youngster. Hikaru was better, but Prague did not give up. And that was the thing that led to him getting half the point in the position. Excellent play there by Pragnananda and with that the first ever encounter between Prag and Hikaru over the board ends in a draw.